Hey everyone, forwards from Snowflake here. Welcome back. Today, we're diving into something really interesting and exciting. That is, how to extend Snowflake with your own functions and procedures using Java. Imagine being able to create your own functions, to calculate values, automate operations, or even interact with systems outside Snowflake using Java. Whether you are advanced Snowflake user or just getting started, by the end of this video, you will get all the tools you need to make your own Snowflake experience way more powerful. So let's get started. There will be a link for this notebook in the description box below. So make sure to upload the notebook into your Snowflake account and click on start to activate this notebook. As you can see from this UDF data flow diagram, we will be using the Snowflake Notebook SQL cells to create Java code and work with the jar files. So in order to upload the jar files, first we need to create a stage for the database and schema that you're working with. You can pause the screen and take screenshot in order to create the stage and upload your jar files. So let's run this cell to make sure we uploaded jar files successfully. And we can proceed to create stored procedures in Snowflake. There are a couple of examples in this notebook to work with the stored procedures. For example, we can use Snowflake file or input stream to read a file. As you can see from this code, I'm creating a procedure. I'm specifying the return type, language, in this case it's Java, runtime version 11, and I'm selecting the head. That is the class name and the method. We create the package. In this case, we're using the snowpark and we can specify which import and classes we need to use for this class. And let's call this function. I'm reading a JSON file. And as you can see, the results is successfully loaded. There is another way to read file that is the input stream. So you can try it out. And the structure is exactly the same as Snowflake file. Another stored procedure is to work with tabular data example, as you can see here. So I'm defining a table with an ID, name, and a role. And I'm creating a procedure to filter by role and retain the results. I'm using Java language and the runtime, runtime version is 11. I'm using the Snowpark package and the handler is filtered by role method in the class filter. As you see, results here is being filtered on the role. Uh, so feel free to change the code, for example, or use various filter methods if you prefer based on the dataset you're working with. And you can also um, work with synchronous processing in the Snowflake stored procedures as you see here. So for example, get result GDBC procedure. This is written in Java and it will be executing a synchronous query using execute async query. For UDF functions, um, it's similar to store to procedures, but it's just the retain value. And I will compare between UDF and store to procedures later in this video. So make sure to stick around to see differences and use cases. I can pass an array and then create the jar. And essentially, I specify a return type, language, the handler, and the target path where I want to store it. And as you can see here, I create a method to contact virtual. We can do parallelization for Java UDF in Snowflake. And this is uh, can be handled in two ways. One is across 
GVMs or within the GVM. If AUDF is immutable, it will retain the same value for each call with the same argument on the same row. So I've written some Java class code here and define two UDF functions as you can see. Of course you can write a inline Java UDF and this is a very easy way to work with Java and create UDF. You can pass an object to an inline Java UDF. So in this case, I'm creating table called objectives and I'm inserting values using a parse JSON method. And then I proceed to create a function to extract from this object. As you can see the results here, it retained the extract from object in our value. You can also pass geography values, for example, coordinates. And in this example, I'm creating a function to compare between two entries. I'm specifying retain value to be Boolean. The language will be Java. I'm using the Snowpart version here, 1.2, and the handler will be a compute method. And then I proceed to create a table, insert two values, and then we can proceed to the compute. Similar to stored procedures, you can read a file with Java UDF, and you can read file contents for unstructured data. Uh, to read stage files, you can specify which files you want to use using import or you can dynamically specify the file using snowflake or input stream so in this example here i'm using function content to read a string where the file is stored in the stage and i also pass as you see in this example the same json file now you might be wondering when to use stored procedure and when to use user-defined function. So I split it into four sections. First is the purpose. You can use stored procedure to perform admin or patch operations using SQL, whereas for the user-defined functions, you can use it for to retain value or for compute value. Sometimes you use it for operations and often used in queries. The return value for startup procedure is optional, whereas for UDF it is required. The SQL integration for the startup procedure code as standalone SQL commands, and for the UDF it's embedded in line as you've seen in this notebook. Startup procedures are best for DDL and DML and workflows and automations, whereas the UDFs are best for transformation expressions and calculations. So I hope you found this video helpful and this notebook is useful for different uh, examples. So make sure to change the code, try different files and head over to the resource sections in Snowflake documentation, one for the start of procedures and the other is for the UDFs. Make sure also to check the quick start as well. So here you have it, how to extend Snowflake with Java powered functions and procedures, when to use UDFs and when to use stored procedures. I hope you found this video helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment in the comment section below and I will see you in the next one.